Calling to order the Needham Select Board meeting of May 31st. Um, this is a special meeting and we're here to particularly discuss the downtown uh, design, infrastructure, and streetscape project. But I'll turn to Mr. Borelli first. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. Um, we are missing Mr. Nelson this evening. Uh, uh, he is uh, probably missing us as well, since we know that he's on a bus or in a hotel with a group of eighth graders, he may rather be here. Um, but we're looking forward to the stories. So with that, let me turn it over uh, to Mr. Olson or Mr. Mackey. Who is it going to, Mr. Olson? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, fortunately tonight for the board, uh, I will be quick and short. So it's nice to see you all tonight. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, it's my pleasure tonight to be here with our DPW team. On my left, our Highway Superintendent Ryan Horland. To my right, uh, our Town Engineer Tom Ryder. And to his right, Cecilia Simchek, our Director of Finance Administration. Um, we're all here to, to, to kind of watch and listen. Uh, it's funny that I've been with the town 12 years now and starting to catch up with me that Ryan and I are kind of the, the old ones in the group here. So. Uh, so I'll try my best to introduce this project, but we're fortunate tonight to have members from the beta team that have been working with the town for several, several years, really on uh, kind of the brainchild and the baby of Rick Merson and, and our late great town engineer, Tony Del Gazo, uh, the streetscape. I always kind of recognize with Tony's kind of his pinnacle of his engineering career. He kind of worked his career to get us this far. And really what you see out there today is a testimony to, to Tony's work and especially beta's work remember going through some of the planned meetings and I've never seen someone mark up sets of plans so intimately than Tony Delgazo and he found every every detail and what we have today is a beautiful design uh, and what we've seen is a beautiful design before tonight so I think what we'd like to do tonight is introduce the team from beta talk about the history and Bob Mackey is going to do that for us because I think it's important for the new members of the board and for all of us to kind of hear how we came to be today and then like uh, our town manager had put out last week to the stakeholders, this is really a reset to kind of present the project and talk about how we've come quite a way since the beginning of this project. And I think we'll talk a bit about changes, really. I think uh, Mr. Mackey is going to talk about the charge of this group initially was to get traffic through the center of downtown and make it look good, but to flow the traffic through. Since then, we've had a lot of changes, both in the world and downtown. So we're going to talk about how COVID's affected kind of this design and we want to get your all all your input tonight so with that said like i said i'm going to be short and go right to introducing uh bob mackey from beta and his team thank you bob thank you madam chair thank you mr mackey good bob evening uh so i'm bob mackey with beta group uh, i'm the uh project officer for the uh, for our company i've been doing this for the town for just under 20 years so i've, I've my fingerprints are on pretty much everything we've done. Uh, with me <clears throat> is Melissa Rikos. Uh, she's actually the project manager on the job. And behind me is Justin. He is the transportation engineer. So he, if, if there are any questions that come up on the, on the uh, engineering side regarding traffic, uh, Justin will be here to uh, uh, back me up. <clears throat> so with that, I thought, and to, to Eddie's point, uh, a little bit of background is probably helpful because this project, believe it or not, has been going on since 2000 and, 2009. Uh, it started with the uh, Chapel Street water main. Um, <clears throat> we were doing a, a replacement of the water main. Uh, Tony Delgazo had approached me during the design and asked, you know, we're going to be tearing all the sidewalks up on Chapel. This might make a makes sense to start to look at doing some sort of an update to Chapel Street uh, from the from the perspective of streetscape. Um, so we did that, uh, which helped kind of establish some of the basis uh, for the streetscape. And then from there, we moved on. <clears throat> and in February of 
2013, we actually started the streetscape, uh, or the preparation of the streetscape design for the town. And it was a high level overview of what the downtown could look like. Uh, we started a, uh, well, the, the town, excuse me, started a, a committee. Uh, some of the existing members are to my right. And uh, we met many times over the course of a year plus uh, on a monthly basis. And we went over just about everything you could possibly think of in terms of streetscape and the downtown here in, in Needham. Our charge, as Ed noted, was primarily traffic flow. If you think back to that time, the traffic signals were not working properly. Um, <clears throat> they were definitely not communicating with the preemption for the commuter rail. And I can tell you personally, sitting on Dedham Street for between three and five minutes, knowing exactly what was going on, but can imagine that drivers that didn't understand that there was actually a rail crossing happening um, could be a little frustrating at the time. So that was really our primary charge, was to get those two signals at Dedham and at, at Chapel communicating directly and then also communicating with the uh, preemption uh, for the commuter rail. The next part of our charge was obviously safety. We we're making sure that uh, pedestrians could get across the roads there safely, were visible. And then finally, the look. Wanted to see if we can improve uh, the overall look on the streets themselves. So with that, <clears throat> we began our project. <clears throat> The downtown was broken up into five phases. So we had uh, Great Plain Ave, which was actually broken into two, actually three phases at the time. So we did the first phase, which is already completed between the two major intersections. Then we were going to do east of the intersection, west of the intersection, then go up to Highland, and then go down to, down to Chestnut. Um, east and west were actually merged together for this particular phase that we're, we'll be presenting tonight. Um, so uh, the, yeah, so let's start there. I'm not sure who's advancing the uh, slides. Yes, if you could stop right there. So the, up in the center there, directly below uh, the town common is, is phase one. So phase one is completed. And, I, and like, like I mentioned, the, the primary charge there was to make sure we could get traffic through that intersection efficiently in coordination with the, uh, the commuter rail. The next phase that we'll be talking about in a little bit will be phase two, which is on, which is both east and west along Great Plain Ave. So that would actually finish Great Plain Ave um, for this effort. Uh, all work for the downtown project was uh, planned to be uh, funded under Chapter 90 money, which I believe has been the case all along. And so from there, we, we moved into the meetings uh, with, with the uh, Streetscape Committee, and we looked at a, a, a host of, of, of issues and, and uh, challenges. <clears throat> One item was we had to look what was the look of the downtown going to be? So we, we looked at street lights, crosswalks, sidewalk finishes, edging. We looked, we looked at it from the perspective of maintenance and visual appearance. We wanted to make it as, as maintenance, I don't want to say maintenance free because nothing is maintenance free, but as low maintenance as possible. <clears throat> then we looked at pedestrian safety. Uh, back then the crosswalks were traditional crosswalks that were lined up with the curb line. Under the phase one, we started to incorporate bump outs so that the sidewalks actually come out and they're even with the end of the, the row of parked vehicles so that the drivers can actually see them and they're still on a, a curb. Um, <clears throat> we uh, designed, or not designed, we planned to put uh, lighted bollards in. So the bollards are the steel posts that protect the, the, the pedestrians from vehicles. If a vehicle strays, you're going to hit the ball and you're not going to hit a pedestrian. And at night, those are lit so that the drivers can actually see the pedestrians. Um, 
we spoke about, or we, we spent a lot of time talking about traffic and traffic flow. We did two different uh, computer simulation models of the downtown to make sure that the traffic was gonna flow properly with the uh, commuter rail. And I think based on the results of phase one, I think we achieved that goal. It seems to be flowing through now efficiently. One thing to note, there was a lot of debate early on about <clears throat> Do we want the traffic to flow quickly through the town? Do we want it to flow slowly through the town? Or do we want some sort of a balance? And the committee had really come to the conclusion that they wanted a balance between the speed of the traffic, getting traffic through efficiently, but also making sure that the pedestrians were safe. So we don't want traffic flying through there 50 miles an hour. So I think 30 miles an hour is, I think, what we settled on. On-street parking, spent a lot of time talking about on-street parking. <clears throat> we did have members of, I guess I should back up, we had members of the business community were on. We had a select board member, uh, town manager, uh, all the department, all the various departments had uh, representation, planning, DPW, et cetera. Uh, we had members from the ADA community, uh, bike bikers, um, so we tried to, kind of cover every possible concern uh, going through this process. <clears throat> so we did have representat representation from some of the local businesses, uh, and they expressed a strong opinion of trying to maintain as much on-street parking as possible, because that's really kind of their lifeline of having folks uh, pull up, <clears throat> get what they need, <clears throat> and maybe drive off. Bike accommodations was, was another topic. We spent a lot of time, uh, several months actually, talking about bike accommodations. We <clears throat> were trying to see if there was a way that we could get bike lanes in. And, and the short answer is after a lot of consternation and trying to figure out if we could make traffic, pedestrians, and bikes work, we really couldn't as far as a dedicated lane. I mean, you've got the building, I mean, right now, and you, you see it today, you have a building, sidewalk, road, building, and a sidewalk. There's really not a lot of room to add, say, a dedicated five-foot bike lane in there. But as a compromise, <clears throat> it was decided to put in share the road, where it would be painted that bikers that were experienced bikers would be able to use the road, share it with the uh, commuters or anyone that's using the roadway, and um, that would work. <clears throat> From a safety point of view, we didn't think it would make sense to have uh, younger families with younger children driving down Great Plain Ave. Even if you had a dedicated bike lane, I'd be a little nervous about that. Paint on a street doesn't protect you from a car being distracted and swerving off and, and potentially hitting a, hitting a child. So uh, we spent a lot of time talking about that. <clears throat> And that, so those, those arrows that are kind of going, no, uh, excuse me, east and west, those are the share the road uh, symbols. Yes, exactly. Um, so the idea is that experienced bikers can use the road. Um, less experienced bikers would have places where they could bring their bikes, dismount, you know, tie their bikes up, do what they need to do in town, or walk their bikes through. So we did spend a lot of time talking about bikes. <clears throat> Handicap accessibility was obviously a, a big topic of discussion. The main items were we wanted to make sure that uh, folks in wheelchairs could get around the downtown you know, efficiently. So the, uh, the handicap ramps coming off the of sidewalks were dished so they weren't the, the tight handicap ramps. It allowed them to a, a little more freedom of movement. And all the materials that were chosen uh, were obviously ADA compliant. So the, we spent a lot of time talking about the specific pavers and <clears throat> would those be okay for a person in a wheelchair? Um, quiet zone was talked about a bit, but not too much because we were still actually, we still actually hadn't done the quiet zone study at that point. Um, but that's kind of an element that's been added now. <clears throat> And I think the final item to just cut, just to touch on would be the gateways. 
So at either end of Great Plain Ave, on the west, far west end of the project and the far east end of the project, we have these structures called gateways. The idea was to alert drivers that something special was happening, get their attention so that you've got a lot of folks that are in the downtown crossing the road. <clears throat> we wanted the drivers to be aware that, just be aware that there were people potentially on the road and we want, didn't want anybody getting hurt. So the, the gateways would serve as um, um, an alert to the driver and then it op and, and provide an opportunity from a landscape architecture point of view to add a nice start and finish to each of the ends of the project. So those were, those were really kind of the items that we touched on during our meetings with the uh, Streetscape Committee. And uh, actually, I have to say, it was a great group. Sometimes with, with those types of groups, you have got people that don't agree. And the, the group really did gel, in, in my opinion. I think they did a great job. <clears throat> so now we've finished that. We finished phase one. Now we're into phase two. So what's displayed up above you is the west, uh, west of the common. So this would be from the railroad tracks down to Maple Street. So the, the job will pick up just before the tracks, we will go across the tracks, across down to Maple. We've got uh, a, a, a traditional box intersection at Maple, and then we've got the, uh, the smaller crosswalk uh, at, is that Glen Doom? Glen Doom, uh, sorry. And uh, on the on the Maple Street intersection, on the east side, are the gateways. So they're, they're towers. We can show you, uh, actually, there's a rendering in the back corner there. And I think you have a copy of the renderings in front of you. That kind of gives you an idea what one of the, um, yeah, there it is. It would give you an idea of what one of the um, gateways would look like. So there'd be two independent I don't want to call them towers, but vertical structures <clears throat> that would have the ability to uh, have a, a banner tied between them. And the banners could be changed out for any uh, festival uh, in town. It'd be uplit at night, have some planters <clears throat> around it. But, um, but that's what a, uh, one of the gateways would look like. So if you could go back to the previous slide. Perfect. So we had finished the 50% design back in uh, 2020. And then we had our lockdown occur. <clears throat> All our lives changed a bit. <clears throat> and one thing that did come out of that was folks had, didn't have much to do back then aside from either work from home or so the, the, the downtown got a lot of use during COVID. And so the idea was we had some on-street dining already planned, not so much on the west side, but on the east side. And the debate began about, should we expand the sidewalks even more to have more on-street dining? In order to do that, there's a bit of a balancing act of, do we take our parking to increase the the, uh, the sidewalk, do we take out a lane of traffic to accommodate it? So we worked with the engineering team and DPW and we, we made some tweaks to the, to the design since. <clears throat> we haven't presented those to you yet because we were still trying to get to a point where we all agreed that it kind of made sense of what we had. And that's kind of why we're here tonight because we have a design. So on the west side here, we have the concept was done. So we have our sidewalks, we have our curbing, we have our trees. The trees are, are, are strategically placed so that they don't block anyone's facade. They're, they're, they're tighter cal uh, not caliper, what would you call it? With? <clears throat> yes, exactly, come on. And uh, 
because I know the, 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 the trees that had been there kind of spread and it kind of blocked a lot of facades. So the businesses have been asked to uh, change that a bit. So now if we can just jump to the east side, I think that might be, yep. So the east side picks up just beyond Dedham. So that was the end of phase one. And that goes down just, <clears throat> just before Greensfield. And that has a uh, three-sided um, crosswalk, same thing just redoing the sidewalk, street lights, uh, uh, trees, and gateways. <clears throat> so that's kind of where we are. And we've done some tweaking to the design, but I think it's probably a good opportunity to come back to you folks to decide, do you, do you want to stick with what we have or do we, do you want to charge us with going back and taking a look at wider sidewalks? <clears throat> I just want to give you some of the implications. So if we, if we take out a lane of traffic, I would highly suggest running the traffic models again to make sure that the, um, we don't significantly affect tra traffic coming through the downtown since now it seems to be working pretty effectively. Uh, we probably have to do some traffic counts now because traffic patterns now have changed since COVID. So <clears throat> we're going to see a, a bit of change there. And some of the businesses in, in, in the downtown have changed as well. So maybe where some of those on-street dining uh, locations are, maybe we want to adjust them. So <clears throat> that's kind of the end of my presentation. I didn't want to go too long. I was told to keep it under 20. I think I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I could talk a lot longer if you'd like, but um, maybe it'd be a good opportunity to turn it back to the board to see what your thoughts are. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. I think we probably do have some thoughts and questions. Um, I, I am curious, you spoke at the end about um, thinking about eliminating a lane of traffic or something like that. I guess I have a, a couple of related questions. I believe I understand that if we wanted to increase sidewalks or pedestrians, that we can't have the traffic that we have, the bikes that we have, and add that. So we're gonna to have to figure out how to eliminate something. Correct. One of the questions that I might ask is if there were to be uh, some option that provided for wider sidewalks or more pedestrian opportunity there, is there a recommended route for bikes that would take them somewhere essentially around the square if they were headed on a through route? Um, have you thought about what that might look like? Yes, actually. We talked about that during the streetscape uh, project. So when we, when we spoke to the, the, the bike committee, or community, excuse me, there were, there were two basic routes through Needham if you were more of a hardcore biker and that would be north-south and east-west. East-west obviously kind of makes the most sense to come through Great Plain Ave because that's kind of the, and then north-south would be coming up Dedham <clears throat> and then heading up Highland. Kind of the, the recommendation that we came to was you could approach the downtown from all four directions, but there's easy ways to get around the downtown without coming directly through the heart of downtown. So if you're coming up Dedham, you could go up Warren Street and then come around and then come back down at Pipertucci's. Um, and if you're coming down <clears throat> Highland, you can kind of do the same thing. You could jump onto either of the parallel roads and go around. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's kind of the, the, the conclusion that we came to is that there are routes, we could actually publish routes, you know, if that were desirable. We could come up with a GIS map and show some routes suggested routes, if that makes sense. And I'm presuming that roads could be marked as well, right? And we continue to get questions also asking about the thoughts about um, Chapel Street and Highland right around the common, making those one direction in different routes. And I think that's also been discussed and perhaps you're able to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of doing that. Those have been discussed. Um, <clears throat> I think the feeling was always to try to give drivers as much freedom as possible without restricting. 
Both roads are adequate, adequately wide to accommodate two-way traffic. Um, the signals are timed to allow for two-way traffic. Um, it's certainly something that could be done. We could definitely uh, make Chapel and Highland one way. <clears throat> I think you'd need to do a little bit of traffic modeling in there just to see on you know the morning and the evening peaks if that significantly affects traffic at all. But realistically, it probably wouldn't be dramatic, but you would still want to study it. Okay. All right. Are there questions from colleagues? Ms. Frail? I wonder if you could elaborate. Well, thank you for this. This is great. And the background is excellent as well. Um, I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit about uh, not road bikers, but just recreational, you know. I think uh, it would please me if we would <laughs> encourage people to do errands on foot or by bike. And I, I know that I see um, parents and small children, especially children like in the carrier seats, you right. know, coming out to do errands and to toddle around on the uh, on the common. And so I'm wondering if you can elaborate on the infrastructure. If they can't ride their bikes through this area, what are they doing with the bikes and how are they safeguarding their That's equipment when they're not there? So on either end of Great Plain Ave under this new phase, so so phase one was the two big intersections. This is now phase two, which is both sides. At the end of either of these two phases, the far east and the far west, they're, we call them the bike corrals. And they're large areas set aside for folks to bring their bikes up and you know, attach them to the um, corrals and then walk through and enjoy the downtown. And that, that's kind of the uh, place that we landed. There's, there's a couple of small other bike, um, bike racks in the downtown, but the intent was that if they're coming in, that's probably a good place to tie your bike, go enjoy the downtown, and then go back and then right away safely. Does that answer your question? It does, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, just for the uninitiated, how does a bike corral differ from a bike rack? It's just larger. It's it's like a, a a number of bike racks rather than say a, a four bike rack. Thank you, Mr. Borelli. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I really like this design. I know I remember all the iterations, and we had at one time posts and columns, and it was very cluttered. And I think what you've done with this is much more streamlined. Um, I just have a couple comments as far as the bike. So I live a block. Um, from this going west. And as we know, it's a major commuter route going through Great Plain Avenue. So the cars actually still back up to where I'm at. And I'm not complaining, I live on Great Plain Ave, that's my choice. My concern is, is if we start tweaking this too much and widening and you're gonna have people start going around the downtown, I think to have a vibrant downtown, you have cars that go in, pull over, get the cup of coffee, go to the bank. And I, I wanna encourage as many people to still use this through way that we can. Um, so I'd, I'd be very hesitant about you know, large changes. And, and it seems like you've addressed that with the bike corrals and, and other amenities that you proposed. Just a couple of comments. Um, the crosswalk, and it, this was brought up a town meeting um, prior because there did used to be, I don't know if it was legal or illegal, a crosswalk near Needham Bank was going across the street. And now, and I see the scale, and I'm trying to scale it, but it looks like it's probably 300 or so feet between, you know, the uh, the Maple Street intersection, and then to your next crosswalk, uh, right down in the square. So, I know you've looked at it, and I know it's not feasible to put a crosswalk. I just want you to be prepared for that, um, unless you're telling me tonight it is it is feasible to get a crosswalk between the tracks uh, and Maple Street. But I remember from the last. A discussion it was looked at and uh and wasn't able to be done so um, i know that's going to be on people's minds um and then just kind of an amenity question as far as power um in some of these uh you know the town um uh, kiosk i'll call it or for a better word um are we planning to put power there for future use just um in those those areas i think that might be a nice amenity if you ever 
need it while we're doing this, I'd, I'd think about doing that. Okay. Um, so those two, two comments. All right. Very good. Mr. Keene. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is a great presentation. I love it. It looks great. A couple of quick questions. One was a crosswalk around the train that has been around for a while. Um, on east of it by like Sweet Basils, are we down to one lane? It is now two. Are we drawing down to one? Are you, are you talking uh, Great Plain going east? East, yeah, past. Uh, it, would be, it would be one lane. Okay. That'd be good. Um, and that was to accommodate bringing those sidewalks out. Correct. Okay. And when we when we looked at the traffic, it didn't seem like there was much of a traffic impact. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, no, it'd be better spent on a sidewalk. Um, any thought of 45 degree parking in any iteration of this? We talked about that. Okay. Yeah, we talked about that in great length, at, and that was very early on in the streetscape meeting, because I know there are, there are a few communities out in Western Mass that have them. <clears throat> the issue with those is, fo is folks backing out into traffic. Correct. And, okay. and the, the, the committee decided that for safety reasons, we didn't want to go down that road. Okay. And then finally, um, the train crossing, are we engineering for a quiet zone, possible extra gates? We will be at, and so if, do you want me to detour into the quiet, quiet zone a little bit? Is that okay? Yes, please, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> that was a design criteria that was given to you. So speak about it. So the quiet zone, so there, there are four public uh, commuter rail crossings in town that are public, there's one private. So the one at the golf course is private, the other four are public. In order to have a quiet zone in town, you're going to have to control all five. Okay. So four, I don't want to say it's easy because it's, you know, it's just a function of money, but you control them right. legally. The uh, golf course is the one that poses a problem because we have to make sure the golf course is on board with everything that we want to do. <clears throat> the study looked at, there, there are a number of ways of, of uh, I don't want to see armoring because it's the wrong word, but protecting uh, a crossing. And the, the one that seemed to make the most sense in all of your crossings, all your public crossings, are four-way gates. So right now you have the two-way gates, so you have the two gates that come down. The problem with those gates, and the reason they're not acceptable in a quiet zone, is folks, and, and this is actually a term, they'll, they can slalom yeah. the gates. Sure. So they can literally drive around the gates. And, and in a quiet zone, what you're doing is you're trying to protect the tracks to the maximum extent possible by taking away the human element. So you don't want somebody doing something like that. So that when the engineer is coming down, it's just a straight track. So he or she doesn't have to blow their horn. I do want to just note to the, to the board that even if you do get a complete quiet zone in place, it does not prohibit the engineer from blowing the horn. If the engineer feels there is a safety reason to, to sound the horn, they will sound the horn. Right. But they don't have to do it on an normal basis. So if they're, if they're approaching Great Plain, they don't have to start sounding the horn way back. Okay. So, the, so the quad gates are two gates on either side. So those will be included in the, in the final design. Okay. Um, and then finally, the gateways um, at either end, <clears throat> before COVID, so about 100 years ago, um, that actually went down in flames at town meeting. It was talk about doing banners and signage right. across the street. So it's right, right. being to see what happens with this. It's, right. Yeah. I know early on, <clears throat> the gates and uh, you, you they, 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 were, they were massive and they were brick and they were imposing. Um, the current design is a lot more flowy, air flowy. Okay. It's, it's more metal. It's, uh, you could actually run um, <clears throat> vine or some sort of a climbing plant on it. Okay. Uh, it's a little less intrusive than it was. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just weigh in. I'm not sure I love the, the gateways. So for whatever it's worth that, I'm not sure I fully appreciate or understand the purpose to sure. them. Okay. Um, thinking about it, saying something like Needham Farmer's Market at those points 
seems to me like it's information that's way too early before people actually need it, and I'm not sure if they'll understand how to interpret it, but that's kind of my read at this point. I do want to note that this is a public hearing and that we invited a number of other boards to join us um, this evening, so I'm grateful to those board members who did come this evening. We scheduled this meeting on the fifth weeks, particularly so that other boards would not be meeting um, tonight as we could have this discussion. So I. I know that we have some folks from the public who are here, but I want to open it up first to other boards to see if you have other comments or questions. I don't know who wants, Ms. McKnight, if you'd like to start. Thank you. Um, and these aren't necessarily coming from the planning board. I'm a long-term member of the planning board, but um, I, um, I was very glad to see the uh, the improvements to the uh, to the gates to the uh, railroad gates um, and my husband and I have been working uh, towards a quiet zone for a long time and um, I guess speaking as a member of the planning board I think it would will really help with the revitalization of our downtown as far as encouraging uh, multifamily housing in our downtown area um, because the noise is a factor at the present time. Um, but I have a question. Um, you mentioned that this project is being, um, you're using Chapter 90 for money. That's um, correct. Is the Chapter 90 money, is, you, can you use that to put in the four quad gates? Yes, yes we can. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. I just wasn't sure if that was true or not. Excellent. Um, and then, um, I think I, I think I understand with regard to bicycles and sidewalks in Needham that uh, people can bike on our sidewalks, but not in the downtown. I remember there were some teenage boys, you know, on Highland Avenue up by Bertucci's zooming, you know, and I called somebody and said, are they allowed to ride on the sidewalk? And the answer was, yes, they are, um, except in our downtown. And so I think this plan you have uh, really accommodates that. Um, all right, you can ride your bike here, but when you get here, here's a place you can tie your bike up. You know, so I, I, think, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, now, um, on, the, on the concern for the sidewalks, the width of the sidewalks, uh, you mentioned the history in 2020 and then we had the COVID era, um, but I know the select board and the planning board also has spent a lot of time thinking about sidewalk dining and um, dining on, on the street in a, you know, a couple of parking spaces and you know, protecting the diners from the cars and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, has your current plan been informed by the, I think, two seasons of outdoor dining we've had since COVID? I see you nodding. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes we've had, uh, <clears throat> I mean, since we've all kind of come back from COVID, that's really been our, major discussion is how much more do we need because under the under the current design we have large wide sidewalks on the east side of uh, uh, the eastern portion of, of great plain ave mm -hmm. on the south side where some of the restaurants mm -hmm. are yes which is which was called the old theater block i guess you know years ago yes so that was already in there prior to covid so now since COVID, we've talked about maybe trying to expand some of the sidewalks on the western side. Um, a little bit of hesitation of doing expanded sidewalks around, around the commuter rail because they're very loud and having, you know, dining within 100 feet of that commuter rail, I don't know if it's going to be all that pleasant, but we'll, we can still certainly expand those sidewalks wherever the town would like. Mm -hmm. um, and you brought up the point about the... Um, I'm blanking on the names of the, the portable ones. No, 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 the, uh, the, the portable dining. Parklets. Parklets, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we, we are including a parklet as part of the design, and, and the parklet would essentially take up one parking spot, and that can be moved to anywhere around the downtown. Uh, and you could actually provide parking. So, I mean, provide parking. You could provide dining. Um, and the idea of it is, if you have a, a restaurant move to a different area, that you could you could potentially accommodate them with the parklet or however the town sees fit. 
Um, now, um, a follow-up question on that. On the east side, um, is it true that you'll be expanding the sidewalks themselves beyond where they are so that they do more dining right on the sidewalk? That's correct. Oh, good, because I think that the current parklet, you might say, occupies two, at least, parking spaces. But the expanded sidewalk should yeah, that, that, that. that is partly why, <clears throat> to your point about why we're losing a lane on Great Plain Ave heading east, because mm -hmm. that, that's where we push the sidewalk out into that lane. Yes, and um, I, I heard um, our select board member, Marion Cooley, say she isn't quite sure about the gateway structures. I must say I felt the same way when I saw it on the plan. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that what other planning board, I'm not speaking, as I said, for other planning board members, um, but I think it's something to really think about. Is this really how we want to approach our downtown? I'm a little ambivalent about it. Um, and uh, so thank you. I, I think um, those, those are my questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. Terrific. Any other questions? Who wants? Mr. McCullen. Uh, Justin McCullen, I actually represent both the traffic management. <laughs> <laughs> Dual purpose, <laughs> thank you. Hats. <laughs> so, no, from, from, from this side, actually, I was part of the committee um, with um, uh, Mr. Vice Husband um, that did the initial vetting of, when the, of the, uh, of the uh, quiet zone. And so um, it's great to see that the incorporation using the Chapter 90 funds, that I think that's great. I do have a concern with the compromise of for for cycling and, and i get because we have tried to you know adopt a a you know complete streets multimodal type you know uh, paradigm for 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 needham and this is this is really i think the primary objective is, to, is the flow of traffic as opposed to the flow of pedestrians or increasing potentially cyclists i think we have to be vigilant about how we present this to the community because i think there's going to be a lot of folks who have we're going to bring up some some of those um, you know, comments to say, I wouldn't call them objections. Um, another thing from this hat um, is proposing one of the pinch points and pain points that I, uh, that I hear about is uh, cars coming off of Garden Street um, that taking a left hand turn. Uh, there's that traffic light that's right there, the, uh, the railroad preempt. Um, and potentially after a study could be look into restricting left hand turns during certain hours. You know, it's really only an AM and a PM issue, but uh, nonetheless, I think that would help. Um, I don't know if, I know Nahoyden has the truck ban. I don't know if the if, if the route comes off garden, so we do have to take that into consideration if it is there, but I don't think that is. Um, but other than that, I think this is a, this is good. I, I would be a little bit concerned about the size of the sidewalks, but um, in terms of the width, but I get it. I, I see dropping down to the, um, the one lane on the east side. Um, as, as, a, as a good compromise, but that's kind of my, uh, my comments. Thanks. Terrific. Mr. Handel. The town meeting did very strongly support banners, and it became clear that there weren't going to be a way to attach banners unless we did something proactively. So without speaking to the quality of the design of the towers, I think there is a utility to having the ability to announce events and occasions in the town that cross the street. I know if you drive through Holliston, for example, at certain times of the year, there is a banner across the road and it kind of adds a nice New England community flair. So to the extent that we can do that, I, I think we should. Secondly, with respect to dining noise and the train, we already have a lot of outdoor dining in the Chapel Street parking lot, which is very close to the crossing. So I think people can accommodate themselves to that. I think those of us who go to New York have dined in spaces where there is an incredible amount of street noise, but yet it seems to be able to accomplish that. And I think COVID has taught us that people really do want to have the opportunity to eat outside and it changes the character of the whole downtown to be able to do that. So to the extent that we can maximize that, I think it helps everybody. I would second that thought from Mr. Handel. Any comments, Mr. Good? One question I had just was in terms of um, when you were talking about the, uh, and I'm not, I'm not proposing this because I understand 
so that you could get the bike to pass through. But that only works if they can connect to something else. So, right. it, you know, it may be an interesting idea, but if, if the whole network doesn't actually join things, right. then, uh, then that's kind of, uh, that's there. what I was gonna say. We could probably do it in pieces, but I don't know if we could connect them all. Yeah, I mean, I know that when, when we talk to people who are biking regularly through the downtown, uh, you know, their major concern is, I want to be able to be <laughs> They want to be in a, in a way where they can feel safe, right. just as you're alluding to, you know, with, uh, you know, having a bike with the children on the back and that kind of thing to get all the way through the intersection. Right. And uh, you know, it's difficult. I know that down on uh, Highland Avenue, they're trying to do as much as they can to be able to incorporate bike mm -hmm. right. But it's all about can you connect all the dots to be able to make the flow through happen. So Correct. Anyway, that's just a, a thought. Okay. Right. It all comes down to who's the primary design point. Mr. Crocker. Uh, thank you. I just want to restate what Mo was mentioning. So right now I'm going to be wearing my cap as, as co presence of New Year's Eve, and that is banners. Banners are something that, again, Mo was saying, it's, it's New England flavor. It's driving through the town and seeing here. He hears what's happening in our town, and we love our town, and this is what's happening. So I'd like to emphasize, you know, restate the emphasis on finding some ways. Because I was looking at, you know, the flagpole, finding, you know, connecting to the flagpole over to the, over to the, you know, on top of Masala Art, the third story building over there, finding a way to connect that. And I didn't pursue it very hard because private property and so forth. In any case, um, it would be great to have something where it is just, it's there. It's just a given. It's by right, as the phrase goes. That's all, just restating that, thank you. Just for everybody in general, could you talk a, a moment about what the perspective timeline might be for this? Because I know that we also have a parking study that's going on right now. And one of the aspects of that parking, or will be starting, <coughs> one of the aspects of that will be um, a question related to parking meters which is another aspect of what's on those sidewalks and what's taking up space as we think about all the users of sidewalks. Right. Uh, the timing on the job, I mean, we were at 50%. I guess part of it depends on if we're going to step back and, and do some more design work. But I mean, we would probably need another four to six months to finish everything and get it on the street to bid. And it, you're probably looking at at least one possibly two construction seasons to get through this. Um, <clears throat> if you recall, when we did phase one, a lot of that was done at night, and night slows it down. Uh, I'm assuming we probably need to do a lot of this work at night, especially along any sort of businesses. I don't want to speak for you, but um, the businesses, it, it worked well having the work done at night. But if we have clear blocks where we don't have businesses, we could probably do some of that during the day. But the bottom line is that slows things down. So you're probably looking at a year and a half to two years. Thank you. Mr. Good, did you have another question? Yeah, there are obviously various systems that different towns have experimented with. Some use the kiosk box where you go up and you put the tag on the windshield, and, you know, under the inside the windshield and so on. And other ones, you know, like Newton is using the um, uh, passport right. app. Um, what are the considerations that have been brought to that based on the current technology of trying to make it really easy for people to pay for meters, but not since 
since basically having change in your pocket is becoming almost, you know, a thing of the past. That, uh, well, so I don't think that that's the topic for tonight. Mm -hmm. I do think that's going to be a topic and I would hate to see us necessarily just replicate the meters in this project. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something we need to understand before this project hits final design. Um, so that we can figure out what that's going to look like and we don't just plan and plant more meters that are going to be going away. Um, totally agree. Um, Mr. Tucker, I know I can see that we have a hand up. I don't know if we have multiple hands up, but can we open it to people in the public? Then let's bring her over. Hello, Jackie, we can see you. Well, we can see your name. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having this option to zoom in um, as uh, it's a tough time to be in person uh, for these meetings, but really appreciate the ongoing uh, Zoom participation. Uh, I have um, actively um, written to the select board about this project uh, for the past uh, five years, I'm um, excited and ha I mean, let, excite, happy to hear that it's coming up for discussion and debate again. Um, and I'm, I'm standing before you today to actively urge the select board um, to choose to rethink the design. I think they're um, not to throw away considerations and past process, um, but a lot of that is from over 10 years ago um, that is being referenced and um, the, the notion that the town is actively discouraging biking um, is uh, very upsetting um, as, um, as a mom with two little kids who actively bikes and am seeing more and more people choosing to bike um, for fun, for health, for climate, um, to support businesses, to live locally. Um, and this notion that we would actively discourage um, the other thing is it was explicitly stated for the freedom of driving that every single road needed multiple lanes in every direction. Um, so again, just on basis on equity, I um, urge the select board to um, ask more questions about how we can uh, have equity for all modes before um, having excess um, capacity um, for any one. Um, I think that um, the devil's in the details. Um, I don't have an opinion about banners one way or another, but when I see banners over where the crosswalks are, um, it is frightening to me that we are asking people driving to look up and read a banner at the same time when we need people to be slowing down and looking around them um, to see if anyone is trying to cross the street. And simultaneously, the designs have four lanes, which is a classic double threat and immediately reduces um, safety for people walking, um, as well as um, apex crosswalks. Uh, I could go on about some of these things. I will follow up um, with more information but I'm here standing before you as a resident, as a mom, um, as someone um, who bikes and drives and walks and takes transit and the bus and the commuter rail um, to, to rethink this design, um, to make it truly multimodal, to make it safe um, and make it um, the downtown a place um, that is thrives for families, but also for all ages um, um, of our community and all abilities. Thank you. Oh, and the last thing I just wanted to add is $5 million is, um, is a lot of money and there's an incredible opportunity for the town to pilot different options and configurations as well. Um, yes, you can do traffic modeling um, a lot, but there's also an opportunity to do public engagement through piloting and testing um, different configurations um, as well and truly make it a community um, process um, for engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Um, one thing you talked about with the banners, I think was having it over four lanes of traffic. And I believe I understand now that the proposal at least gets it down to two lanes 
of traffic, so it's just one lane in each direction um, as it's currently proposed. So it still doesn't solve all the issues that you identified with the banners, but it um, makes it a little bit more straightforward. In the representation, it shows where there's a transition from four to two. Um, so it's even more ambiguous because you have merging plus um, crosswalks. So just something to take a look at. But my primary thing would be multimodal safety and encouraging all modes. Um, thank you. So I think the proposal will have us with one lane from farther back on Great Plain Ave just staying with one lane under a new design or no it goes to two lanes right in the center of town currently unless we make some distinction there can you Sorry. respond to that bob how does that work if we were to put bike lanes in we would have to lose one lane all the way through the center of town at least one lane at least one lane yeah um, the thing you have to factor in with, with bike traffic is uh, park vehicles and allowing park vehicles and then having the bike lane outside and people opening their doors. And so the, you can't have a very narrow bike lane. You have to make it a little bit wider to account for that door coming out. <clears throat> the issue with that is all the crossroads. So every time you come to a cross, if it was just a straight through, it wouldn't be that much of an impact, but you've got traffic trying to merge in, and in a lot of cases we have dedicated lanes, and we're trying to flow the dedicated lanes in, have the other lanes traveling by. It all it does it just slows traffic. That's all. Um, does it mean you couldn't do it? You could definitely do it if you'd like. I would highly recommend going back and remodeling it to see what that impact would be on traffic, uh, but that is an option. So I think that's an option we probably need a little bit more feedback from the town on. Uh, Jackie, if I could ask, ask one thing for the record, can you state your address, please, if you're still there? Oh, sure. Uh, Jackie DeWolf, um, 242 Dedham Avenue. Thank you. Did you have a question, Heidi? I'm going to go to Heidi first and then to Justin. I just wanted to say that I appreciate Jackie's point. I do feel like the... Um, the dismount area is a very nice feature if your objective is to bike to town. However, if your objective is to bike through town, whether recreationally or say on your way to the train station, rather than bringing your car to the commuter rail, for example, um, this doesn't, this is gonna impede your progress. And so I do think that we need to think about through trips, not just two trips. Justin. The renderings and the design, the gap design, and the consistency of the crosswalks are the best. My concern is there are a lot of crosswalks. And you know, on the rendering, it's a large square, which is similar to what's in downtown. You allow a separate signalized cro a pedestrian crossing, and people can cross diagonally. If you, I don't know on the pictures, you have a big box. So there's a tendency if someone's going to hit an RFRP, which we right. know that that light doesn't actually right. require anyone to stop. Correct. Unfortunately, mass state law has awful archaic crosswalk laws um, that are hardly enforceable. However, um, you know, there's going to be a tendency of someone wanting to press it, believe that they do have the right of way, and they're going to cross diagonally using on this, or it, there's just an inconsistency. The renderings were before we updated the plan. We, we spent some time talking about that and came to the same conclusion that we didn't want diagonal crossing mm -hmm. okay. in an unsignalized. Okay. So the flashes would allow for just straight crossing. So there's two sets of flashes yes. at the intersection. Correct. Do, think that's, do we have data on the effectiveness of, of that in other towns and cities? Because you potentially have that could confuse both pedestrians and drivers if you have RRFBs on both sides of uh, uh, the intersection. It, this yeah. is the, getting in the weeds, but I think that, you know, just a, a look I at think that. It's, I think it's something when we get to the final, yep. that's something that we want to make sure we are all agreed. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Chair. Mr. Borelli. Thank you. And I understand the desire to have bikes through this area, and but to me, we're so restricted by the layout, and it would be a shame if you had a bike section in one area, but then you can't even connect it. So right now, I think you started off the meeting saying the traffic through here works with all the adjustments we've made. And I think for the sake of businesses and surrounding streets where you have Linden and you have you know Maple and Oak, people will just start going around it, which I think would be a, a, a you know travesty to not have people come to the downtown because it just ends up being a bottleneck. So I, again, would be just very cautious how we approach this. If we're gonna make changes like that, I'd be curious what we actually think the bike count would be through it if we're gonna actually start looking at, you know, what is the, you know, how are bikes gonna work with cars? But again, in an ideal world, yes, we would have all those things. I think the committee did a great job in balancing um, those two ideas. And I think, uh, you know, it will work the way you modeled it. Um, I would just also say on these pillars, getting back to the banners, the reason I support that is for the banners. So if it were just, I remember prior we had them, welcome to Needham, that doesn't interest me. But if there is a way to get banners across the street and this is the way to do it, then um, I'm fine with that. I would just make sure that it's not blocking views from the retail stores down. You know, they're not looking straight into a pole, which I think would be horrible. So um, I think it's the utility of it is what I like, but if it was something where, People didn't want banners at all, then I could see them go as well. So, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Fitzpatrick. My question uh, for the board to start thinking about for next steps is with respect to the crossing infrastructure. What, what data do you need to know in order to design that crossing infrastructure? Do you need to know where the sidewalks are? Or is it clear there? I mean, what is. What is the absolute minimum information you need to know in order to start that design so that that maybe uh, we could get that moving? Are you talking for the rail crossing? Yes. Um, no, we, we have most everything we need already for that. So those sidewalks, depending on a bike lane or the size of the lanes or how many lanes or the width of the sidewalk? It, it'll just affect the arm lengths. Perfect. Any other questions? Mr. Glusing. I do like it. it's the destination approach east and west. Is there anything that the town can do for people coming in from Highland or up Chestnut or up Dedham Ave that would work in a similar way? Uh, have we thought about a location that we could start to create that amenity? for people coming in north and south. It's really just an east-west solution at this point. So that would be something for the town to think about. It's, it's really probably outside the scope of what you're looking at. Uh, it's outside of the immediate design, but it's not outside of the overall project. Okay. The overall project is intended to go up Highland, up and pick up where Chapel loops around, and then Chestnut going down to School Street. So it, it, that whole area will be all connected. Okay. And the other comment was that Tony Delgazo did bring these, uh, mostly that we talked about the gate, empty gates, in a very early conceptual way a few years ago at the design review board. And, and the comments at the time was they're a little heavy. And, but I think the, while there's a lot of talk of banners, there's gonna be a lot of time when there isn't a banner on them. And for them to be able to function as like, well, between the narrowing of the street with the, getting the crosswalks closer together, and those as a part, uh, sort of a feature element and some lighting on them, I think that uh, it, it starts to do what Bob was talking about, which is you're not driving along Great Valley Ave anymore. This is a different area. This is gonna be sort of an announcement to start to pay a little more attention. Uh, there are other things going on here. So it, I think it'll serve a little bit as a, as a traffic management element to start to slow people down between the physical changes on the great ground level, but also as a vertical element that you can see as you're coming in a half a block earlier. So I think they're, they're a positive thing. They, we would urge you to carefully design them. Um, and initially there was a lot of seating around them and 
that was pre-COVID, and one of our comments was a little wild of seating on these remote ends. <laughs> And suddenly it's like, well, that's great idea. Maybe you want to make them a little bigger. <laughs> so, and, and I do like the parklet idea because the reality is you're widening the sidewalk in an area that has several restaurants, but there's certainly a restaurant going across the street or on the West End, and what do they do? Um, and Paul, Paul and I have been champions of the parklets for a number of years. I just sent him an article yesterday that was in the Bloomberg News about what they're doing in Sweden, they're creating a whole variety of parklet styles to function as whatever a neighborhood needs. Some of them have children's play things on them, a lot of more electronic stations and seating. So I think keeping that in mind going forward, we might want to have that ability to do some of those things. Okay. Any other comments tonight? So you need actually some direction about whether you're doing a relook or whether you're doing a refinement. Correct. And it feels to me like no matter what, you need to go back and revisit traffic counts to evaluate whether this design, which takes you down to one lane, no matter what, can work. That's correct. Okay. So in that traffic account or traffic count is there anything else that people would want to ask about that is something to be considered for the traffic count it feels to me like that's a baseline to making some other decisions for going forward i continue to wonder if there is some measure or if it makes it easier for us to think about bikes in some directions if we consider whether Highland and Chapel right around the common become one direction. I, so I understand that, um, you know, that there's plenty of lanes there right now, but if in fact we were to safely accommodate bikes in those locations, as well as the on-street dining that we have, is that something that could be accomplished by making them one direction and still meet our public safety needs and the traffic throughput that is required. I'd be curious. Gloria, Ms. Grice. Spent a lot of time driving through uh, Brookline on Beacon Street during COVID and they, uh, because of the, the reduction in traffic, they actually turned one of the two lanes in each way to a dedicated bus bike lane. Obviously, that's not a, an option we're going to have. But um, to keep some of that, what they ended up doing was making bike lanes inside the parking. So they didn't have to be as wide. You didn't have to worry about people opening the doors or swerving into traffic around the open doors. Um, so the protected lanes between the curb and then the parking was set out a little bit farther. So that gave you um, a narrower profile, less street space that needed to be used, um, but also additional protection to the bikers from the traffic. Mr. Handel. Um, with respect to one way, I, I think there is an argument that can be made that it would improve traffic flow, but I think it would also increase the speed of traffic in the downtown. I think Chapel Street is an example, feels tight, that calms traffic and to the extent that we can calm traffic in the downtown it makes it safer for everybody so I, I would hope that the lane would still feel tight at the end i understand that there is a value for that but and you're right that is an important uh, piece to preserve certainly on chapel street ms frail i would just be curious if you could maybe accommodate all these wider sidewalks if you could accommodate a a bike lane on the sidewalk uh, that's incorporated. I think, you know, one of the concerns that I would have is that there are a lot of Pollard students, for example, biking to school and biking through the center. The kids are going to be biking on the sidewalk anyway, let's be honest. And so I, I wonder if that's maybe a solution to protect them from cars. And we have, it seems like we have a little extra space. There aren't going to be bikes there all the time, so it could still be used by other pedestrians as well. 
an interesting idea. Madam Chair, if yep. I could, uh, again, I think the one-way idea to me, I think we'd have to look long and hard at that, and maybe as, as Ms. Farrell was saying, there's other alternatives. I think to me, uh, my opinion, that would kind of be the final alternative. I want to hear from businesses how that would affect them, and usually one-ways are difficult to maneuver. I know there are questions about public safety vehicles getting through in and out of that area, so I just, um, again, would be something that I'd be very cautious moving forward if there are other solutions to accommodate bikes um, and really try to figure out the problem we're trying to solve. And again, if we do counts, estimates of actually bike travel through this area. Thank you. So, so I think that's important, Mr. Burley, but I also think that now is the time that we're making a decision for the next 20 years. And I do think things are gonna change over that period. So I think it's important that we understand this. Mr. Good. bike lane into the side of the sidewalk am, am I, I i'm just you know curious since they're still working on the uh on the section of Allen avenue but it looks like they're trying to do that i mean it, it looks like they built the sidewalk and then there's a lane that's about this wide that seems to ramp up at the edge and go through is that an attempt to be able to have there be no if anyone knows, because it was an interesting idea, because <laughs> um, they did the takings to, you know, to widen the sidewalk in towards yeah, the, the yeah, actual problems. It, it comes to mind because uh, my son goes to Northeastern and there is a shared sidewalk all along that strip on Columbus and it, it seems to work well, but it's pedestrians and bikes and it's actually mapped in two directions. So, um, it, you know, it just might save us some road space if we feel we really need it. We're actually doing a project in another town and their advantage is they have a lot more real estate, so mm -hmm. we have more options here. Right. We're very tight here. I said it's very easy. If you push some of these buildings back about 10 feet, we'd be, we'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's not happening, but yes. <laughs> but in, in the concept there, um, it's going to be, if you start the middle of the lane, it's going to be two lanes of traffic, parking, an, uh, a, a, a separation, a small, like uh, island, so to speak, and then bike, and then a sidewalk, so that the bikes are actually behind the cars rather than in front of the cars. So you can make that lane tighter because you're not worried about things happening. It all, it all comes back to her, yeah. it, it's, there's only so much real estate out there. So I just find out there. So thank you, Mr. Crocker. And then I think I see a hand up again. But I just wanted to give uh, my experience going to the downtown for years. So I used to avoid the downtown like the play. I simply did. I could coming from Wellesley, coming from Dover, coming down Chestnuts, uh, coming down uh, Chestnut Street, and I turn off without. I turn off in Garden Street. I take a left on Garden, screw it around. I take a right on uh, School Street and go around it. And then, uh, and then, then the then the traffic flow increased, and then the lights were timing better. And then, so I spent a little bit more time going through the center of town because I was like, oh, let me just enjoy the center of town a little bit more. But so I spent a little bit more time now going through it. Um, so the interesting, so the interesting aspect is, is that with the time, better timing of lights, I spent more time going through it. But at the same time, I, I was still happy going around it. Now, it's, now we're talking about you know changing the flow of something one way and sort of how does it change things. So um, you know, with the flow or with the lights timing better, every now and then I would go to the center of town and I'd take a left onto Chapel Street and so forth. At the same time. If, if, if something was changed to one way, would that affect me, me personally? No, it's not going to have any negative effect on me personally. Would it have a positive effect on the downtown? I don't, I don't know what positive effect it has, but that's what's happened with my travel, you know, through the years, through time. There's been a lot of it as far as how I, how I negotiated the downtown. And what's, what's brought me to it is a certain flow of traffic. What's kept me away is a certain flow of traffic. But if the, if the one-way situation changes, I don't know how that would affect me going into the downtown. Anyway, that's how I've changed it. Thank you.
Okay, if you would please bring her back again. Hi everyone, uh, just two additional comments. Um, when thinking about um, potential biking and, and even like walking counts, um, I hope um, you look at walk and bike sheds. Um, traditionally and currently, if we just look at existing counts, it's not a really good um, label at potential demand. And instead looking at how many people could access the downtown, you know, in a certain like 15 minute walk shed or how many people could access in a 15 minute um, bike rate ride. Um, and so I, I hope that the town will start to think about um, how to encourage those different modes um, through, through design. Um, I hope that the town also does align it with the parking study. Um, again, there's, you know, if, if we want to talk about parity of different modes, um, it's where there are opportunities for people to park and then have to walk to destinations if we're asking people, you know, biking and otherwise to do the same. And then there's a lot of, um, I just want um, to be mindful that the through traffic is for, you know, as someone who's, is is as much about going through but also attracting people too i mean what's amazing about the downtown is its destinations its restaurants its shops its services it's um you know the new common that's about to be redesigned um and so um how how can the public realm um encourage more and different different uses um as a destination not just as just a place to how quickly can you get through um and uh, same thing, calm traffic and make it a place where all ages um, have the ability to, to use it and, and really get to um, see what makes Needham great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Keene? Um, a bit towards Gloria Grace's point about the um, traffic lane and then the bike lane around, you had mentioned being perhaps a barrier between them as well. Um, <clears throat> we do get snow and these streets have to be plowed. So that might be a problem. The other thing, as we are all talking about this, I'm wondering if we're asking Great Plain Ave to do everything and be everything for everyone. And is there any wisdom in sort of taking a bit of a wider view and looking like, do we go onto School Street, look at a bike lane from School Street onto Chestnut to going up Chapel? And maybe we, so we don't burden a great plan to fix everything. Maybe we just broaden the scope. Sorry. So I appreciate that. I think that was one of the questions that I, I think I tried to ask early on is, is there an alternate route? You know, how can, how can you do that? Mary, but yeah. I think that would be, I I'm totally agree with you. How can we find another way around this? Justin. Yeah, yeah. My Thank idea, you. or actually, was to come up with a different route and map that out. The second is when you do your updated counts, um, there are a significant amount of people who avoid downtown and they start as going down to Hoyden and cutting all the way around. So, when you do your, when you throw your tubes down to figure out, I suggest going out as far as possible because you're really trying to encapsulate the potential for the people coming in rather than just putting it on here or on a couple side streets. It may not capture the whole uh, data because of just habit, just as even Artie was saying, for years people have avoided it, but they go down to Hoyden, School, Maple, Oak. Um, so, okay. And I don't know what we've studied for the catchment area previously, but, uh, you know, I think those are all good points. Yeah. Um, I, I think what we learned during the pandemic or the, the sense that we have from people is that they are much more oriented to wanting to use the town center a little bit differently. I'm hoping that that use of the town center actually benefits our merchants by having people who are around who are here and not just going through town, um, even though we all recognize that there are people who use this as a route to get to other communities. So, um, but we do want to be as friendly as possible for people who are downtown that they can come and stay for a while and be here. So, and sometimes getting here by a different route than a car will be advantageous for them. Okay, any other comments from people? Do you feel that you have enough that you can start 
to evaluate where we are right now? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking some diligent. Notes. Okay. We'll, we'll need we'll need yes. some more discussion, but yes. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Um, any other further business related to this this evening? If there's not, then I want to take the time to thank uh, members of the public who attended and certainly the members from other boards who attended to provide input uh, this evening and from our staff who have taken the time to be here tonight and listen so that we can move forward. Oh. Yeah, we, we already voted it. it. Yeah. We did that first. We're, we're quick. <laughs> Thank you for that. So yeah. members Thanks of the staff the and Beta, who has actually spent time living with these designs, and um, we'll be living with them a little bit longer so that we can sure. get them to the place where we really are convinced that they will support the town going forward. With that, I would welcome a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you everyone.